Welcome to MET 320 in the spring of 2021. Let's go over the course quickly and show you where things are located. The first page you'll come to when you click on the course is the announcements page. And you'll see events off to the side, things that are coming up. You can click on the calendar, which is nice. When you click on it, you'll see all the different things that are coming up, when they're due, and so forth. I'm going to have due dates for all of the lectures and everything as well. Uh, I'm not sure that they'll show up here on the calendar, however. I'll go back to Course Home. You do need to watch all of the lectures because that's where you're going to get the course content. Uh, we do have uh, WebEx. WebEx is the video conferencing system I'm going to use this semester. So any meetings that we have where we talk together will be conducted via WebEx. And we'll have to play that by ear because it just so happens that this semester I was double scheduled somehow for the same time slot. So I've got controls to teach at the same time as Thermo. Uh, not much I can do about that at this point. So fortunately I've taught this class for the longest. I've got it down I think where I can make it a good course where it's pre-recorded. The other class is a lot more lab intensive so I will interact with that class more. But I want to interact obviously with this class as well and so we will schedule meetings and so forth. Uh, they'll either have to be outside of our normal class time or they will have to be strategically scheduled on days where I cannot meet with the other class. And there will be plenty of those days. Uh, so I'm not trying to slight this class in any way. I want to help you. I want you to learn. That's the main thing I enjoy about teaching is watching you all as students learn. As a matter of fact, let me change my view to the way you would see it in Brightspace. One of the most important places to go is to content. When you click on content, uh, depending on where you left off it'll bring you in, but let's start off at the syllabus at the top of the course and we'll go over that quickly. Now I'm assuming that you will also get onto Brightspace while you're watching this video so you can zoom in on it there. So I'm just going to read a bit from it and talk about it in a little more detail. My phone number is there. I'll add my cell number a little bit later, but since I'm posting this video on YouTube, I chose not to put it on until later. Uh, my office number is there, but that's probably not very much use since you can't get into the office suite anyway. There's my email address. That will be very useful. But one thing I want to say about submissions and things, please don't send me submissions to my email. I get so many emails every day. Sometimes things get buried. They get lost. I want you to get credit for the work you've done. And obviously, if you send me something and I've missed it, Try to remind me and I'll, I'll try to find it, but please, just in the first place, don't submit things to um, to me via email. Submit them on Brightspace. Brightspace will associate them with your name so that it makes it much cleaner and it's always there. That way I don't lose track of it. I want you to get credit for the work you've done. Our theoretical meeting times are Tuesday and Thursday, 9.30 to 11.30, but of course, as I said, that's the same time slot for my controls class. Uh, this will be essentially asynchronous online. There is a room set aside for us. It's uh, in 1122. We can meet in that room during this time slot uh, if necessary. However, I would prefer to meet online on WebEx. Uh, there may be times we have to get together face to face. That's fine. We'll do that too. So asynchronous online. The idea here is that I will pre-record the lecture content and you will go and watch it online and then I'll have a quiz afterward that you'll have to uh, go through and complete. Uh, you get three credit hours for this course and there are some prerequisites. If you have not had, primarily if you haven't had heat power, MET220, you need to get out of this course because this course is, um, I start off sort of as an accelerated version of 220. Now I don't recover heat transfer but I do cover the basics so if you still feel a little shaky about 220 you can make it through this class, but if you haven't had 220, you'll just be steamrolled over. So uh, if you haven't had 220, make sure that you just get out of this class and take 220 when you can. You can read the course objective. Basically, we're going to delve deeper into thermodynamics and particularly thermodynamic cycles and then some gas mixture information and so forth. There is a book required. You can see the ISBN number there. One thing I always do in all of my classes, where there's a required text, I post the first couple of chapters that you will need in the course so that you have time to go on Amazon or wherever you want to go, online, in a bookstore, whatever, and buy the textbook. And I give you the ISBN number so you can search. I 
purposely use older versions of textbooks because I've been around long enough and seen enough textbooks in the new edition to know that they really don't change much. There, it's not like thermodynamics is going to change fundamentally tomorrow. I mean, maybe it could, but it hasn't <laughs> since you know the 7th edition. I think he's on like the 9th or 10th or 11th edition now. I'd have lost track. It's a lot of work for me to update to the new edition. It's, uh, there's really no point. It's more expensive in terms of the cost of the textbook to the student. So I don't even bother. I'm, I'm sticking with the 7th edition until there's a good reason to move on. So plug that ISBN number into your favorite search engine and get the book on its way. You should have enough chapters to cover the first two, three weeks of class. And, you know, if something happens where you've ordered the book and it's just not come in and it's been a month or something and you need more chapters, I will give you more chapters as long as you've ordered the book and, you know, you've got the copyright to it, essentially. You've got the right to have the book. All right. Um, homework is worth 10% in this class. And the homework... The homework is really important. My philosophy with the homework, that's where you actually learn, okay? You can listen to me try and describe the concepts and the way things work the best that I can, and to a certain extent, you'll learn something from it. You'll, you'll understand things a little more deeply, but until you try to apply those concepts yourself in the homework, you won't really understand the material. You won't have uh, how can I explain it? Well, it's kind of like if you wanted to build up muscle, okay? How would you do it? Would you think about how to lift the weight properly? Well, that's probably a good idea, right? Have an idea for, or a plan for how you're going to lift the weight safely and not hurt yourself. But that's not what builds muscle. What builds muscle is lifting the weight yourself. Now, I can be your spotter. And what I mean by that is I can help you lift the weight. I have pre-recorded solutions to all of the homework sets. So you can go on YouTube, you can go in Brightspace and find solutions to all the homeworks that I assign to you. Now, here's a bad way to use those videos. You could just simply turn on the videos and start copying, right? Watch season number five of CISC <laughs> if you want to. That's not a good way to do it because that's allowing your spotter to lift the weight for you rather than you lifting the weight. You will not build the muscle. You will not be able to solve the exam. And I promise you, you will fail the class if all you do is copy the homework solutions from the videos. You need to try the work yourself. Now, what I'm trying to avoid is two things. Number one, I know that Chegg exists and there are sites like that where you can go and you can probably find solutions to every problem I give you except for the ones on exams because I make those up. If you go and you do that, you'll go to Chegg or any of these sites, and I've been on them, and all they give you is, okay, problem statement, plug numbers into this equation, move it around a little bit, you're done. A little bit of algebra, maybe some calculus, and you're finished. That's not what I want you to do. The students come to me all the time, and they say, well, I didn't do well on the exam because I didn't know what formula to plug the numbers into. No, the problem is you didn't understand the physical principles of what was going on. You've got to understand and learn about energy and how it works and how it's transformed and the nature of energy and how it, the thermal energy degrades. In other words, its temperature goes down and so therefore it's less useful. You've got to actually understand these physical phenomena because that's the important part. The homework is just there to, to you know, let you practice the principles a little bit. That's all it's really about. So if all you do is go to Chegg or you go to my videos and you just copy things, you're not really thinking about what's happening physically, about how every term in every equation means something in the real world. And you need the ability to tie all that back to real meaning. Now, once you have an equation set up, say an energy balance or something, and you're manipulating it algebraically, there may be intermediate steps where the meaning is not clear or obvious. That's okay, but you've got to start with meaning and end with meaning, okay? So the homework looks like a small percentage. It's only 10% of the grade. Some of you may say, well, I'm not going to bother with the homework. That's another big mistake because if you do that, you basically are saying, well, I, I want to be buff at the end of the semester, but I'm not going to go to the gym. <laughs> okay, that does not work. The quizzes are 20% of the grade because there's going to be two different types of quizzes. There are going to be some fairly easy quizzes that are associated with the lectures or the le lecture videos. And primarily those quizzes are to make sure you're watching the videos. That's all it really is. So, so probably at worst multiple choice, most often true false types of questions and probably 10 or so questions per quiz. So these are going to be pretty easy if you have watched the videos. The other types of quizzes are more calculation type quizzes. Now in 220 I always give concept quizzes, but in 320 I think you need a little more calculation. So I 
uh, I, I've got all these quizzes that uh, require some thought and a little bit of a few buttons on your calculator. And, you, and the reason I give you these is because you have to understand the physical principle. Every one of the problems that I'm giving you focus on a physical principle that you need to know and to understand clearly. And so if you have no idea how to get any of the multiple choices, usually four answers, you don't know how to get any of those numbers, then you don't understand the principle behind the question. And again, the purpose of those quizzes is to elicit questions. And I'm glad to meet with you on WebEx and answer any questions you have. Please feel free to text me, call me, pretty much any time of day. If I am available, I will certainly meet with you. Last semester, uh, I did everything online that I could. And students contacted me, and some students, I got together with them 11 o'clock p.m. Sunday evening. Okay, that's, I don't care. I'm here for you guys, and I want you to learn. So please take advantage of that opportunity. There will be a project. I haven't decided exactly what that project will be. We've done several, or we've run several different projects in the past, um, but uh, that will be 10% of your grade. And I'm open to input on what project you'd like to work on. I've got a couple of ideas, uh, but I'm open. There will be three tests. That will be you know a first, second, and then a final test, each worth 20% for a total of 60% of your grade. So hopefully my math works and that's 100%. It looks like it's right. So that's how you will earn credit in this class. Now, homework is assigned and collected on the second day of class. So if we are, what, Tuesday, Thursday? Yeah, we're Tuesday, Thursday. So homework is due and assigned on the Thursdays, but quizzes are due on the Mondays. Now, like I said, there's two different kinds of quizzes. There's a quiz after every lecture, right? And that quiz is due. What I'm going to do is pre-record the videos and I expect you to get those done by the end of class, 11.30, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you need to watch the videos by the time that class is done and answer all the quiz questions immediately thereafter. So I'll give you till say, 12 o'clock, something like that, to get into the quiz and answer the questions. And these are not questions that will be terribly difficult. The other type of quiz, where you're doing calculations and things, those will be quizzes that are assigned that cover the material from the whole previous week. Now, those I've got set up so that they are due on the first class day at midnight or there, thereabouts, I think 11.30, you know, end of day. And the idea of those is that you can look at them, and if you have any questions on them, you can ask before they are due. You can get with me the day of the class and ask questions. Um, a similar idea with homework. Homework sets are due, obviously, on Thursdays, but they cover the material from the previous week, hopefully. That'll be the most common. I might get a little bit ahead of you in the lecture material. All right, uh, let's see. All these quizzes are online through Brightspace, and they're automatically graded. Uh, some of them I'll allow you a couple of different uh, shots, like the quizzes for the lecture. I'll give you two shots at that to get the right answers, and that is they are part of your grade. And so I'm not requiring attendance in the sense that you know you have to watch the videos at a certain time but do you do have to watch them by a certain time and you do have to you know have tried to understand the material and do your best to answer the questions on the quiz because that will be part of your grade if we do anything in the lab you certainly need safety glasses uh, obviously with covid if anyone's in the lab you will need uh, uh, you know a mask well anytime you're in the building you need the mask uh, if you're working, uh, I think it's within less than six feet of other people, you need a face shield as well. So just make sure that you're ready for all of that. Let's see. I already talked about attendance. No, no late work is accepted. Now, I will make exceptions if you get sick, obviously. Please communicate me, especially if you, if you get sick. I will make exceptions, but I don't want to accept late work. I want you to stay on top of everything because this class can very quickly overwhelm you. So it's very important that you try to keep up the best you can. Now, I will return completed tests to you in the sense that uh, I will uh, post my grading to your account so that you can see it in Brightspace. So some of these notes are from you know a regular class where we are in person and you would write on paper. I would grade the paper and give it back to you. But obviously since we have bright space I'll be grading virtually and returning exams to you virtually and you can review them anytime you want on, on bright space uh, obviously they'll be shut off at the end of the semester but you probably won't care at that point I have caught people cheating in this class more than once 
Uh, it's a little bit surprising, I think, to students how much I can understand and interpret from what you've written on your exam, and not just what you understand, but if you worked with someone else. I'm not trying to scare you, it's just I've been doing this for you know over 10 years. I think I'm on my 14th year now, and I taught as an adjunct before that. I've been grading for quite a while. And I'm not going to say I'm really good at it, but I certainly am capable of noticing when you don't really know what you're doing. Uh, I, I can tell. I, I, in fact, I had a student once that sat down in my office with me, and he had his exam, and he was going over things, and he said, you know, I don't know what I was thinking here. And I said, well, you started here, and then you thought this, and you went over here, and then you went over here, and I, I went through the whole thing, and I said, here's what you were thinking. And he said, wow, you're right. That's exactly what I was thinking, and I completely forgot. How did you see all of that? Well, I've been grading for a long time. You know, I, I, I have to try and understand what you were thinking when you came up with your solution so that I can give you credit for whatever you understood that was correct. And I always give partial credit. I look for excuses to give you credit. I don't just look at the final number. So please, don't cheat. It's, it's not worth it. I know that grades seem extremely important right now, and they are important. I'm glad that they act as a carrot to get you to work, right? To pull you along, that's great. But I don't remember what my GPA was when I graduated. You know, I don't, I know it wasn't a 4.0. I know it wasn't bad, but I don't, I couldn't tell you the numbers. Three point something. I don't remember now, okay? I know it was three point something at the end of my bachelor's and three point something at the end of my master's. I want to say about three and a half. I don't remember. I don't remember if it went up or down from my bachelor's to my master's. I don't know. It doesn't matter anymore. Your GPA really will not matter after your first job or so. So, and you know, worst case scenario, you have a bad GPA, you'll probably still get a position. It just may not be the most desirable position, and you'll probably change jobs in the first two, three, four years anyway. I know I did, and this was back in 2002. When I graduated, I worked for Amatrol for four years, and then I went to another company. Stayed at that company for a year, and then I came to here, where I've been teaching ever since. So, cheating's not worth it. I, I struggle to convince you of that, but please believe me, it's just not worth it. Uh, there are some notes here about emergency evacuation since we won't be in the classroom very much at all. Please read it, but um, I doubt we will need to make use of it. If you have a disability, you have a learning disability, and you've been tested and you get extra time on tests and things like that, please let me know as soon as you can. I need to identify students in the class so that we can start to plan when we have exams for how you're going to get extra time. One of the things I require of all students is that during exams you are on WebEx with me, with your cameras on, because I want you to know that there's some oversight here, just like there would be in a regular classroom with a regular exam. All right, beyond that, here's our, I call it a tentative schedule, because most of the time what ends up happening is we get into a topic and it gets a little longer and so it pushes out a week or so. But ideally, we'll be done with this class uh, early April or so, and we'll have the rest of the semester to work on a project. Uh, so hopefully that's how this goes. Please let me know if you feel like material is coming too fast or too slow, and I'll try to speed up or slow down uh, correspondingly, especially if the bulk of the class is telling me the same thing. The course learning now comes in objectives you can find on Brightspace. So please do. In fact, I'll show them to you in just a moment. Um, and there's a bunch of, I would call it boilerplate things I'll, I'll ask you to read. These are the policies and procedures and things in relation to COVID. So please go through all of these. There's a lot of links here. If you have any questions and you have trouble finding answers, contact me. I'll, I'll do my best to help you. Uh, we'll find the answers that you need. I had a student last semester who got COVID and he and I worked out a, an alternate schedule. He ended up finishing the class after the semester was over. I'm going to work with you, okay? I am not going to say, well, you didn't finish the class by the end of the semester, so you get an F. No, I'm not gonna do that to you. I'm reasonable, okay? Just communicate with me, and I think you'll find that we can work something out. So please do let me know if you get sick, especially with COVID. In fact, there's some required reporting to Purdue Health Center, I believe it is. Uh, it's down in here somewhere. I don't know where it's at right now, but there is a reporting requirement if you get COVID, and of course, you have to be cleared for attending campus. Now, since most of our class is going to be online, that shouldn't be a huge priority for the sake of this class, although it should be a priority so that you can go to campus when you need to. 
uh, you have to have a COVID negative test to attend campus unless you're positive within the last 90 days, so you have antibodies. There's a whole rigmarole to this, but you can find links in here that tell you all about it, or you can talk to me and I'll tell you. You do want to be cleared to attend uh, uh, classes and be on campus, so make sure you get that done. I know most students in New Albany have not yet. You guys have been through this probably once before. Well, certainly you should have if you're in 320. You've been through this before where you had to be cleared. Um, you can do a third-party test and submit the documentation and be cleared that way. Um, I think they're having trouble with Vault this time, getting you know tests out to students. I, I don't know how all of that is going exactly. I do know la as of I think it was yesterday. Today's actually I'm recording on the 16th. As of yesterday, the 15th, I got an email that said that the majority of our students in the, the New Albany campus are not cleared for attending uh, on campus. Again, with the format of this class, that won't be such a problem. All right, uh, the course schedule is something set up in Brightspace. It's basically the calendar that's on the first page, so don't worry about that. Table of contents, I wish I could just turn this off because <laughs> I don't like it, so skip that. Go straight to start here. Read through this. These are sort of boilerplate things, but it tells you what you need to do to succeed and minimum technology requirements. Then there are a whole bunch of boilerplate university policies, so there's the Protect Purdue COVID-19 information, academic integrity, non-discrimination, all of these things. Please do peruse these as well as the student help and success area. Um, there's information about accessibility and so forth here. All of this is important, but it's the same thing every year, every class, so you guys have probably already seen this. Course information. This is the first area I would say is sort of the beginning of our course. So here's the course learning outcomes and the course learning, I forgot what CLOOs stands for, course learning outcomes and objectives, I think. I don't remember why it's clues. It doesn't matter. The point is, here's what you need to learn in this class. This is what you should be able to do when we are done. And I'll let you read through these, but I, I purposely measure each one of these each semester, typically on the exams, um, in order to determine whether or not you're learning what the course is supposed to teach you. My schedule is here. When you click on it, it's just a PDF document, and it'll show you. Uh, I'll go ahead and click on it. It'll show you um, when classes are scheduled for me and when I'm available. <laughs> I'm available regular hours, but I'm available irregular hours too. I really don't mind. I've helped students last semester on Saturday and Sunday. As long as I don't have anything going on, I really don't mind. So please take advantage of that. Please ask me questions. I enjoy teaching. I enjoy watching you learn. So you're not bothering me when you send me an email at you know 10 o'clock on Friday night and saying, hey, I need help. If I'm on email, I'll respond and we'll get together. If I'm not, as soon as I see it, I'll respond and we'll make a time and I'll help you. Okay. Um, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy watching students learn. So please take advantage of that and let me help you however I can. I'm sorry that two classes were scheduled at the same time. It's too late to change that. Once I found out, it was too late to do anything about it. So here we are. We're fortunate that 320, as I said, is a class I've taught for a long time and can be taught in this format of pre-recorded lecture. Here's the textbook you need. I know I've got it in the uh, syllabus as well, but there's the IS being repeated. That's what the front cover looks like. And I just realized that I have not yet posted the first couple of chapters. I'll add that to this um, link as soon as I'm done with this recording. There are mistakes in the book, so there are errors. So here's a list of errata. Uh, at least I think it still works. Let's double check. It should. Uh, yeah, I've taught this course in Brightspace. So here's the errata sheet. So make sure you go through it once you get your book. And especially as we're going through the various chapters, make some notes. Uh, about all the errors. There's not too many per chapter to, you know, once we reach a chapter for you to go through and make the small changes. They're, they're pretty easy and straightforward. And a lot of these are not, uh, you know, detriment, well, I shouldn't say detrimental. They're not uh, the end of the world for that particular problem or topic or whatever. Engineering Equation sol Solver is a very good program and it's um, What's good about it is it's a nonlinear equation solver and it has thermodynamic properties built into it. We will use Ease a little bit this semester. It is a program well worth trying. There's a trial version here that you should be able to access. 
Uh, yeah, here we go. So this takes you to F-Chart, which is the company that makes Ease, and you can get a trial version. Uh, also, the uh, software remote from ITAP. If you click this link here, I'll go ahead and click it so you can see what it looks like. Um, software remote from ITAP. When you log in, you can find Ease. Now, I'm trying to remember, I think you just use your password as if you were logging in to, yeah, to a uh, computer on campus. So once you get in, it looks like this. You can just hit apps, and if you do a quick search for EES, Ease, then you can start the engineering equation solver. I won't do it now because we'll talk about it a little bit later, but make sure you know where this is at. Yeah, the site is just goremote.itap.purdue.edu, uh, go but I've got a link to it right here as well. So there's the uh, course information. The way I always set my courses up, I've always got a section, I'm going to skip these two for the moment, but I've got a section where you can see the homework sets and when they are due. Now these due dates also pop up on your calendar and any reminders, so it should help you uh, stay on track. Your first homework set is due January 28th, that's the second week of class, it's the second day, or class day, it's the Thursday, I think, let's double check, January 28th. So it'll be due at night, basically, 11.30 p.m. Now, even though we're online, please use engineering paper, okay? You need to use engineering paper because it'll help keep your work neat. I went through chemical engineering. One of the problems with chemical engineering, although it was a great program, one of the problems, they did not require engineering paper. Now, I am an odd mechanical engineer in that I am naturally sort of sloppy, okay? And... I wish they had required engineering paper because maybe I would have been a little more, I don't know, neat in my work. I, I would always go over to the mechanical engineering building in college and look at the work that was posted, the solutions to homework. And it was just beautiful, you know. It was almost cursive, not cursive, but almost calligraphy writing, you know. that Everything was nicely in a box and laid out where you could understand it. And here my work on note pa notebook paper was just all over the place. And... Well, the purpose of the engineering paper is to hopefully help you become a little more neat in your work. And you, neat work helps the work be easier to follow, easier to correct when there's a problem and so forth. So I'm not trying to make you spend a ton of money, but engineering paper is important. So please get some and use it. So I do require engineering paper on all of my homeworks. I've just got the note on the first homework set so that you realize you need it. Now, okay, first homework set, if you don't have it, it's on order. That's fine. Homework set two, you ought to have it, right? You ought to be able to get engineering paper by at least homework two. Now, some students have worked exclusively in Excel and turned it in that way. That is okay. I will accept Excel work. Excel is actually a really good... Uh, way of solving these problems because it requires you to think about the equations in a little more depth and put it out explicitly in Excel. It's it, it just there's a big advantage to it. So if you want to use Excel, you are welcome to. I do have sixth edition problem numbers. If you cannot get the seventh edition, if you absolutely can't get it, then the sixth edition will often suffice. Not in all cases. But uh, it's, for some problems, there's no uh, uh, cross-reference guide. They eliminated a problem or didn't have a problem in the 6th edition. So I do recommend the 7th. It's not all that expensive. It's commonly available. So please do get the, the correct textbook. But you know, if push comes to shove and you have to use the 6th edition, it's not the end of the world. Uh, what else? Quizzes. I do have all the quizzes set up. Now I call them computation quizzes. You can see I've got to rename these other ones, but all of these are computation quizzes and there are only eight of them, one through seven and then nine. And each one of these, I may add some more to these uh, a little bit later, but some of the computation quizzes uh, in later modules really don't make that much sense. So. So far, these are the only ones I've had. If I come up with them and I add them, they'll, they'll be here. But I also post these in the learning modules, and I'll show you the learning modules in just a second. Exam information will be in the exam folder. Right now, you can't see anything because I haven't posted anything here for you. But this is where you will go for getting your exam when we do our work uh, you know, over WebEx and you're taking your exam with me and so forth. You'll get it here, and this is also where we will go to uh, get any 
any supporting material for exam practice exams for example will be posted here as well all right the learning modules this is the meat of the course chapter one chapter two I've already posted for you I always give you my presentation so you can download these slides uh, now to download them do it this way right here otherwise if you go into the chapter presentation if you click on it it will show you basically a PDF version of the PowerPoint and if you download it from here you'll just get the PDF and one of the problems with the PDF well for one thing you can see that that letters off so it's not quite right like the PowerPoint is and I use a lot of animations let's see do I have any here yeah well no not there anyway I use a lot of an animations and so what will happen is you'll see that I mean these slides look okay but many of my slides will look really odd with figures over top of figures you can't see everything that's because in PowerPoint you're supposed to click the mouse button or press the space bar or something to make it advance and, and animate the next item so you can have my presentations if you want them but I the format I use is to record myself so you can kind of see some of my facial expressions and there's a lot of nonverbal communication there as well but also on top of the slides the slides are the main thing so I, I bring up the slides and uh, that's my my lecture format they're all hosted on YouTube so you can find them on YouTube if you want but the only way you'll know exactly what you're supposed to watch is by going through Brightspace here so this is uh, chapter one week one a lecture and I always put required in capital letters so that you know this is something you have to watch uh, it is due January 19th at 1130 in other words that's when you should be done watching this whole video set I try to keep the whole video set within the two-hour limit of the class range I think I'm over by a couple of minutes for these first few and of course within this introduction will be way over but I think most people will probably watch this introduction before the first class which is fine that's that's ideal uh, but there are other videos that I have not made that I want you to watch and some of these are to explain how things work like how a bomb calorimeter works but some of them are just interesting that are related to the topic we're talking about in particular this destroyed in seconds chemical plant if you haven't figured it out the conversion that's happening there is an uncontrolled conversion from chemical energy to thermal energy and so uh, I just think it's interesting to see thermodynamics in practice so then I try to intersperse my lectures which can be kinda long and frankly boring I try to intersperse those with some interesting videos uh, but relevant to whatever I have just talked about so these two videos that follow this lecture video refer back to that uh, lecture material and or relate to that lecture material so then there's another bit of lecture here and then finally the uh, example problems are posted at the end of that so these are all uh, in fact already recorded they're from past semester but they are the example problems I would work if we were in class together after you've completed all of that then you'll have a couple of different quizzes you'll have a lecture quiz and a computation quiz now right now this says due January 26th uh, that is let's see is that correct if this is the 19th and that should be the Tuesday uh, there we are and so then the 26th yeah that would be a week later so this quiz is associated with that lecture material but like I said it's due one week later there will be another quiz here there will be a lecture quiz and it'll be due at 12 o'clock on the day of this this class right so this class is on the 19th so at 12 o'clock noon uh, I expect you to have watched these videos and take the quiz and complete it and you'll have two tries at it like I said about 10 problems true for us shouldn't take you more than five ten minutes to complete the, the quiz if you want the uh, written out solutions for the example problems I always post those as well so there's a PDF uh, of that here and then I often will have some other videos that I think are interesting but they are optional and I thought I had another video on this one there's one more the history guy is one of the channels I really like on YouTube and it, there should be a video here from him so I'll, I'll look into that as well then the homework assignment is duplicated here remember I've got a folder or a, a link off to the side where all the homeworks are listed but I've also got the homework in the associated model it's the same thing it's just referenced two different places in Brightspace so it doesn't really matter which one you click on and uh, submit your assignment to it'll work either way because it's it's the same thing but here are the uh, <laughs> the loaded weapon I am handing you is what this really is these are the solutions to all of the homework problems 
The way you should use these is to go into your textbook, read the problem, attempt the problem to the best of your ability. And when you get stuck, set a timer for however much time you think is appropriate, five minutes, 15 minutes, whatever the case may be. Maybe you only have a minute. Okay, I don't know what your schedule's like. You have other outside responsibilities besides this class. Set a timer, and if you're just stuck, and at the end of that time and you haven't made any progress, fine, go and start the video uh, of the solution to the problem you're working on. As soon as you get to a point where I have done something different or you're unstuck where you say, oh, I see what I should have done. I see what Professor Sisk did and I see which way I should have gone. I forgot about that principle or I made a mistake here. Stop the video, go back to the homework and try again. Okay, Continue with it. And this way, you are doing the lift yourself, right? I'm not your spotter lifting it for you, and you're actually exercising and you're you're managing to, uh, uh, you know, improve your abilities in the class. If you don't do that, if all you do is you turn on these videos and you copy, you are really doing yourself a huge disservice, and you probably will not do well in the class or on the exams. You probably won't even pass the class with that approach. Now, the reason that I posted these videos is to help you, for one thing, but also I posted them because, you know, things like Chegg became available, and I thought, well, why are we not giving students full solutions to problems? Well, it's because we know we want the students to work the problems themselves. We know that's where they build their abilities. And I realized that as long as I explain to you the importance of working the homework yourself, and give you these analogies to explain that you're the one lifting the weight. If you're not, you're not going to, you know, gain any progress in your thermodynamic ability. As long as I explain that to you, you're all adults. You you can you know. I mean, you most of you are probably in this program because you enjoy the topics. <laughs> Maybe you, you know. Sometimes I, I will tell you. Sometimes in a class, you don't really understand the importance of it. You don't really enjoy it until things finally start to click. And sometimes that happens at the end of the class. Sometimes it happens after the end of the class. Just trust me, this is actually a really interesting topic. It's actually a, a very fundamental topic that I actually enjoy now. I did not like it when I went through college uh, for my uh, chemical engineering uh, bachelor's degree. Now, to be fair, it was a, a very different focus on thermodynamics, but the principles are the same. Now that I look back on it, and I look back, you know, having taught this class many times, I, I'm just enthralled with it. I love it. I think it's really, really interesting and amazing that this topic is so ubiquitous, that it's everywhere, and it's so useful. So uh, anyway, I don't know where I was going with that. It doesn't matter. I, please do the homework yourself. Oh, I know what I was saying. So Chegg doesn't explain why. It doesn't explain how all these things relate and what these things mean physically. And if I give you these solutions, I can explain those things to you. So hopefully, if you're stuck, not only will you see the solution that gets you unstuck, you'll hear me say something that explains the proper way of thinking about the problem and the proper understanding of the physical phenomena and what's going on. So that module is already posted and that will get us through the first class. Uh, I have posted chapter two already as well and this will be in the first week. So it's lecture 1b required. So I've got another set of uh, slides here. There's some information about Electric Mountain. These, this is a required video as well. And then a bunch more example problems to explain how to think about the principles that we've learned. Again, it's the same thing where we have example problems posted. I've got this set due for February 2nd. I think I'm going to pull that back because we're going to cover two chapters in the first week. And really, we need the two computation quizzes to cover that material. Uh, immediately following. I don't want the computation quizzes to fall behind so so soon. Oh, here it is. I put it in here. I forgot. I won't have to update that other link. Here are the optional videos. Uh, and so you, you can watch these. They're interesting, uh, but they are not required. And they won't be part of the lecture quiz, which obviously I have yet to pose, uh, post. Then there's often things that I find very interesting. For example, this cartoon. This shows the energy density in various fuels, sugar, coal, fat, gasoline, and then uranium. <laughs> this is actually accurate. Um, there's a whole lot more energy per unit mass in uh, uranium if you, you know, uh, provide uh, uh, or if you let that uranium react uh, on the nuclear level. Then there is in the chemical reactions and all these these other 
uh, fuels. And of course, that's why our, our planet works, right? Because the sun's basically a nuclear furnace. It's given off a tremendous amounts of energy. Our, our Earth only receives a very small, very small fraction of that energy. But it's enough to drive life here on Earth and generate all this chemical energy that we use. So, anyway, other interesting links uh, that I, I find interesting, these are optional things that you can follow. Rockets are the bombs. So it talks about how uh, basically when you're sitting on top of a rocket to go to space, you're sitting on top of a controlled explosion, a, a bomb essentially. Uh, and then here's our uh, homework and when it's due. Now the homework, I'm not going to have both homework sets due in the first week. That's a lot to ask of you. So this due date will stay pushed out by a week, but I will change the uh, calculations quiz uh, to being due uh, you know, the uh, second week of class. And here are the solutions for that homework set, same warnings as I had before. So I think we'll have a good semester. I look forward to this. Um, I know you may not have liked the first thermo class. I think hearing everything again will help. I think you'll learn a lot. And if you have any problems, please talk to me about it. I'll do whatever I can to help you learn in this class. So look forward to a good semester with you.